let's talk about how we made our Rocket game ready for EGX 2022. Hey, this is S of Control Byte, and since our last update, we've been quite busy, mainly because we've been working really hard to get this very early prototype demo of launch test ready for EGX 2022 London. If you've been following along our other podcasts and devlogs, you'll know that we're competing in Transfusion program against 21 other teams in the hopes of securing 21k of capital. I'm actually recording this video after this event took place, so did we win? Guess you'll have to stay to the end of this video to find that out. Let's go back to the end of July 2022. The game is a mess and we realistically have 6 weeks to fix it. Launch test. It's a game where you take control of a rocket to hit a target or an objective within the level. On the surface this is quite a simple concept but this is by design as you want the game to be accessible to anyone just by looking at it and picking up the controller and playing it. However, we want the game to be interesting and replayable for a long time so we are adding another layer of depth through the game's additional features and broader game loops which are You are given a standard issue Chopper certified flagship rocket at the start of the game. However, as you progress, it will become clear that this simple rocket is not up for the greater task of the game. So, by unlocking new components and modules by completing previous objectives, you can modify a rocket's stats and give it new abilities, like increased fuel, reduce air resistance, or maybe you just want to turn the whole thing into a cluster bomb and blow everything away. In a nutshell, you'll be able to create the rocket of your dreams. In the beginning of launch tests, we wanted the game to allow different types of levels of varying sizes, but we also wanted those levels to be fully destructible and have a lot of secrets and hidden areas and easter eggs similar to games like Ghost Simulator. Later on, we realized that for a level to have all those features, the level needs to be a certain size, otherwise it just wouldn't be fun to play. So in the end, we ended up scrapping all our previous levels, but kept the ideas, then took those ideas and combined it into a much larger level. And having one much larger level creates a better incentive for the player to come back as we can fill it with all those things we wanted to to make the player be forced to try out new rocket designs to be able to discover everything that is to see in the level and unlock everything they want to unlock. We want to make many more levels of this size, if not a lot bigger, but this is the, like the initial template. The current backstory of Launch Test is that you, the player, is playing as a professor selected for the Launch Test program. The game itself will not force the player through a linear story mode or anything like that, as we want the game to be as pure sandbox experience as it can be. However, in the laboratory, you will be joined by your ballistic assistance machine, or BAM. For short, who is an assessor AI made to value the professor's performance in a series of Launch Test, which are the game levels or simulated scenarios. We want Bam to come off as friendly and playful but with a strong arrogant personality which can be seen by how he's both omnipresent but in the simulations himself and in the office. Like he literally has golden statues of him in the levels that he wants to hit. We also want Bam to be able to comment on pretty much anything you could do without being annoying or repetitive. Think ladders from Portal or the AI from Will You Snail. By analyzing dialogue clues from BAM, collecting environmental clues from the surroundings and using context clues from the actual gameplay, interested players will be able to make their own theories based on the evidence to the true nature of the launch test program and BAM himself. Though, I won't be telling you whether you're right or wrong. To remind you, our demo for EGX needs some, if not all of that, to be a good vertical slice. And currently in July, the game was not looking good. And we agreed that we <laughs> it needs to be done in 6 weeks. I'm low key pretending that EGX day 1 didn't happen as it was that brutal. The PC that we were meant to use basically melted down, so as to use my personal laptop, which by all rights is a great PC, however it's a little bit old and needs some service as it keeps all heating. The game was running an average of a smooth 20 FPS, only occasionally going to 60, but usually dipping far below that. And even worse, the game had three separate game breaking bugs that each caused the game to crash in a different way. Joe Bite does not give up though. The hotel had complimentary tea and coffee in every room, and with a kettle on full boil, I slurped all that caffeine up, working throughout the night, fighting the bugs, solving them, and by the morning, those three game crashing bugs had been squashed, and the game ran smoothly. We now had a working game. We still had the problem of our PC overheating, so how could we present our demo with our best foot forward at HEX? The game. Defend saving our laptop. The 
dip into the game's budget and spent the most impactful 1999 quid in our life on a 12 inch desk fan. Our game was now not crashing every 2 minutes and performance wise was running perfectly and people loved us. Now with the game running as it should I was taken aback by the amount of people who came and played our game and gave us great reviews and really useful feedback. So by the end of the second day and the remainder of EGX our morale had been completely restored. So I didn't feel as chained to our stand as I was in the first day as our game could speak for itself for once. So I started exploring EGX and had quite a bit of fun playing other people's games, talking to other devs and just enjoying this type of event which I've never ever been to before. By the end of EGX we were just really happy that people of all ages looted our booth and so that's a game that I think would be fun to play. Played the game and then gave us a lot of positive feedback, it was a lot of useful feedback in order how to improve our game and take it further. And at that point, as a game dev where you kind of lose sight of whether your own game is quality or not, that just made us happy to see that our game we spent three months on actually had some substance and a market that would want us to explore that substance further. So at that point, we didn't really care whether or not we won or lost the transfusion program, which is great because we lost. We got that answer about a week after the EGX event. The feedback given was all right obviously we care but it's not that important what's more important was the people who actually played the game and told us yes i will buy this game if you added this and that and also people who said this game interesting maybe not for me but just having those experience with the game allows us to hopefully make our game better in the future so to summarize this video, our game was broken, now the game is not so broken, we've been to EGX, but we lost the trust future, I would recommend going to EGX because that was quite a lot of fun, and see you in a month or two.